In this video, we're going to dive right into the idea of solving quadratic equations. All right, so solving a quadratic equation is no different from finding the roots of an equation. Finding the root means to find the value of the variable that makes an equation true. It is essentially the same as finding the solution of an equation. Thus, if you found the roots, then you solved the equation. Let's take a look at an example of a quadratic equation. Notice how it is set to be equal to zero. Remember how we usually had the equation set to equal y? Well now, we're basically fixing y at zero. On the graph, we are looking at any point on our parabola that crosses this line since any point on the x-axis would yield a y-value of zero. We don't know exactly how to draw this parabola yet, other than the fact that it points up. So if it were to look like this, then y would be zero at these two points. We can also refer to this as two solutions. There's also a possibility for the graph to look like this. And therefore, the y would be zero when the x's are at these points instead. There is also a possibility that only the vertex is on the x-axis, like so, which would make it so that exactly one x-point produces the y-value of zero. This is when a graph has only one solution. And lastly, there's a possibility of no solutions to this graph, in that there is no possible x that would ever hit a y of zero. Of course, this would be a situation in which the vertex is above the y of zero. Since the graph only goes up for this example, as indicated by our positive a, no possible x would satisfy the equation then. Therefore, to solve for this equation would mean for us to find out if there are any x's that satisfy this equation. If there are, let's indicate them. This example is actually fairly easy. If we can factor anything and take the standard form into the factored form, then the process becomes pretty simple after that. Notice how 3 and 7 are factors of 21, and at the same time, they add to be 10. So we know that this equation can be factored into x plus 7 multiplied by x plus 3 equals 0. Now we can interpret this equation as when x is equal to negative 3 or negative 7, y will be equal to 0. And since we see that the a in this equation is a positive, we know that the graph will look roughly like this, with some adjustment in the vertex and the compression or stretch of it. If you don't know how we got to this conclusion, you should pause this video and watch our factored form of quadratic equations video first, to get a better idea of what we did. So we know right away that our graph will intersect the x-intercept, aka where the y-value is equal to 0, at negative 3 and negative 7. Good. So let's try another example. In this scenario, we've got an A and a B, but our C is zero. This kind of question is the easiest. You simply factor out an A with an X variable, and you'll be one step away from the answer. Here, we've got four as our A value, and if we also factor out an X at the same time, we get this. Since these two expressions are being multiplied with each other, if either of them equals zero, then we would end up with zero equals zero, which would indicate a solution. Good. So when x is zero, four times zero would make this side zero, which makes everything zero. As well, when x is negative 17 over four, we have zero equals zero. Good. So that means our answer is x equals zero or negative 17 over four. Awesome. Now, what about if we had a situation like this one? Remember, we want to factor this in order to solve our equation. So our objective is not to turn this into the vertex form. Our objective is to take this into the factored form. If you don't know how to do this, then we suggest that you watch our factoring quadratic equations advance lesson first before moving on. So first, we would need to look for factors of a times c that would add up to be b. a times c, which in this case is three times negative eight, is equal to negative 24. Two factors of negative 24 are negative six and four, which add up to become negative two. Thus, we take the numbers negative six and four as our guidelines, and we manipulate the equation by writing this. 
Notice how we didn't change the equation at all, since if we simplified this, we would just get this again. So it still represents the exact same graph. Now we can factor out a 3x from here and a 4 from here. We are left with the following. And we know that this is just an expanded version of a factored form, which is 3x plus 4 multiplied by x minus 2 equals 0. Easy! From here on, it's simple to find an x that leads to a 0 either here or here. For this one, we've got an x of negative 4 over 3 that would produce a 0, and for this one, an x of 2 would produce a 0. So x equals negative 4 over 3, or 2. So that's how we would find our solution from a quadratic with an a that is not equal to 1, given the assumption that it can be factored. But when you end up in a situation where you simply cannot factor the equation, such as this one right here, hmm. how would we solve this? Well, we obviously cannot factor it since there are no factors of negative 2 that would add up to equal 6, but luckily there is another way. In the next video, we'll cover how to use what is commonly known as the quadratic formula to find the solution to a quadratic equation. Also, we will show you an example of a question that has no solution. So that's it for this part of solving quadratic equations and we'll see you in the next one.